three, I love you all with all my heart, with all my might. The video got, got cut off when I started talking about this notion that we are sentient, right? Common sense. We're sentient, common sense. So then, um, what's that? Well, we love, we feel emotions. That's what makes us conscious. We're sentient as a result of that. Hey, emotions. And obviously, uh, I started the video, but I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to upload both videos. Even though the previous video was just a one, two minute video. I don't care. It's part of it. It's part of it. So it's part of this video. So I'm going to do it. I don't care. So then again, uh, let's talk about it. So let's start again from scratch. But I'm going back to this idea, emotion and sentient. Because this is who we are. We are sentient because of our human heart. So let, let's let's go full circle there. So obviously we're infinite energy. We're infinite love. This is who we are. We're infinite energy. We're infinite love. This is who we are. We are emotions. I'm just taking this down. We're emotions. We're feelings. This is what makes us who we are. What makes us sentient. Our love, our emotions, our feelings. Hey, so then again, this is why I do what I do because we're infinite love, infinite energy, infinite creation. Humanity, I love you with all my heart, with all my mind. Know that very well. Now you know. I'm just reminding you how I feel about you. Then think about it. Think about it fundamentally what this means and what this represents. So, why are we infinite energy? Why are we, are we infinite love? Why are we infinite creation? Hey, why are we infinite energy? Why are we infinite love? Why are we infinite energy? Because of the human heartbeat. Hey, because of the human heartbeat. Because of the human heartbeat. Because the human heartbeat is the primordial instinct. This is what the human heartbeat is. The human heartbeat is that is a primordial instinct of the human race. We wouldn't exist without the human heartbeat. We wouldn't exist. There would be no such a thing as a human race without the human heartbeat. It's our, it's it's part of life. It's the primordial instinct to exist. It's the human heartbeat. It generates the electromagnetic field of life, the spherical life beings that we are, that powers the human body so systems go live. We can think, we can be conscious, self-aware, be sentient. We, then again, is when the video goes stopped. And what makes us sentient? Emotions, love, feelings. That's what makes us sentient. So then, then again, this is who we are. Intelligent, benevolent species. But let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. If we are sentient, it's because we have emotions and feelings. We feel, we're intelligent, we're conscious and self-aware. This is who we are. So then, this is our nature. So the primordial instinct is that, is the human heartbeat, right? Pulse of life, the pulse of creation. But then again, what else happens at the heart? Love. Love happens at the heart. Emotions. We are sentient. Feelings. So then again, our instinct to live is our instinct to love. Simple as that. Why? Because we love our creations. We make love. We have children. Right? It's our creation. We make it love. We have children. And what's our instinct? To love our creation. We love our children, we love our offspring, and they we raise them and then they themselves become adults and the life cycle repeats. Repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats to infinity. It repeats to infinity. It repeats to infinity because this is who we are, we're infinite in nature, we're infinite. So we live to love and we love to live. Why? Because heart has the heartbeat, gives us life, the electromagnetic field of creation, making us conscious, self-aware, sentient, so we feel and have emotions. And then, what else happens at the heart? Well, we're sentient, so emotions, love. So you see, we live to love, full circle. And then, if you measure it at the labs with equipment and stuff, what's love, really? Well, love is a frequency, it's a vibration, it's energy, it's resonance. That comes from the heart. It can be measured. Love can be measured. It's the highest frequency. It's the highest energy that can be generated from the heart. It's the highest one. It's the highest one that can be generated from the heart. 
So it's other emotions that the heart is capable of producing and generating, but they're all lesser, they're all lower frequency, lower vibration. The highest vibration is love. It's this beautiful thing that creates everything. At the biological scale, the creator is love. This is who we are because energy is creation and creation is life. And we are life and sentient beings to love. So love is energy. Love is creation at the biological scale. We, are, we live to love and we love to live. Why? Because our instinct is to have a heartbeat and to love with our hearts. So then obviously it's the highest frequency. So we want to feel good. We want to have a healthy heart because that means we have a healthy life. We are alive. So then what is that? Well, that's a life of meaning, a life of purpose, purposeful life, meaningful life, happy life. This is all what this is. It's all what that is. We Purpose of life is a life of purpose, a purposeful life, a life of meaning, a fulfilling life, a happy life, the pursuit of happiness, all these notions. They come from this notion, from this idea, this our primordial instinct to live and love. So we love to live. And that's who we are. So what does that make us? If our instinct is to love, to create, to reproduce, to, to have a heartbeat, high frequency creation of the heart, of the love. Well, that what's our nature then? Well, our nature is that. So we are benevolent species. We are a benevolent species. This is who we are. This is who we are. We are benevolent species. This is who we are. This is our nature. This is our nature. This is who we are. Our nature is to love. We are benevolent species. We are good species. We are love-based species. We are heart-based species. We are benevolent race. This is who we are. This is our nature. It truly is our nature. This is who we are. We are benevolent species. Love-based, heart-based, a heartful species, a beautiful race. This is who we are. The human race is this. Remember, we have an electromagnetic field of creation. We lie spherical beings. We used to be very ignorant. We didn't know who we were. We were unaware. We were unconscious. But this is in the past. We know who we are now. We are the human race. We are benevolent species. We have transitioned into life spherical beings, fully conscious and fully aware, metamorphosized into who we are, infinite eternal creators, compass, sundial. This is who we are, all of us. We are infinite eternal creators. This is who we are. This is our nature. This is who we are. And this is the way it would always be because we love with our hearts and our hearts give us life. So let, I'm going to make a few reads here. So life is creation and creation is energy and love is the energy of creation. Love you all with all my heart, with all my might. So love is energy and love is life. Creation creates creators, who we are. Energy is creation and creation is life. Love is creation. We love our creation. Love comes from the heart and the heart gives us life. Love is life. Life is love. Love and love. They come from the same heart. The same place, the human heart. Life is creation and creation is energy and love is the energy of creation. So I'm going to read this one because I kind of... Love is life, life and love. They come from the same place, the human heart. Life is creation and creation is energy. Love is the energy of creation. You see, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. This is who we are. This is our nature. And this is what today's video is about. The fire. The ignition, the life itself, who we are, life, love, energy, fire. So it's y.how slash fire. That's y.how slash fire. It's on Substack and on YouTube. It's a very short uh, uh, text, a very short passage, but I'm going to elaborate it because sometimes in simplicity and the beauty of it, that's where the most profound uh, notions are. So let, let's talk about that. Fantasies and illusions ignite the spark of your imagination. These flames fuel your dreams. This fire lights your destination. Endless energy within. So I'm going to read this one more time. Fantasies and illusions ignite the spark of your imagination. These flames fuel your dreams. This fire lights your destination. Endless energy within. Hey, because this is who we are. We are infinite energy. So let's start at the top. Why fantasies and illusions? You might ask. Hey, 
fantasies and illusions ignite the spark of, a, of your imagination? Well, if you saw my previous video about fantasies and illusions, you know, the Pantheon, this exercise, the 10th exercise, I believe it is. It was my Pantheon, my museum, my statutes, these leaders and, and, and these uh, defenders that all come from fiction. These are fantasies, these are illusions. Why? Because they're illusions, because they're not real. They are fiction, but they generate, they render, they cast, they project fantasies in our mind. They render fantasies in our mind as a result, and we live out these fantasies because of this illusion, this medium, these mediums, this media, right? And then again, I spoke at length about this, all the statutes and what they weigh and who they weigh and why I chose them, what they represented in my life, all my subjectivities about them and my objectivities about it. So then again, you see, I spoke at length. I think that's the largest video I've made, Fantasies and Illusions, when it comes to these 20 statues, this pantheon of self-reflection and uh, contemplation. So why? I spoke at length and it took a while because then again, because it ignites this back of your imagination. Then again, these are fictional characters, right? These are not humans. These are not compasses, not sandals in the flesh, the sandals and compasses, but it's a fiction, hey, a figment of the imagination. Creators, artists, created them, but they're not real, they're not real humans. They're creations of real humans, you see? That's why they matter, because they represent archetypes and ethos, themes of society that matter, of the human species, of the human heart. And if you look at each of those, they were all, all of them were by chosen purposefully with my free will, uh, because they all had a big heart, they represented love and bravery, all of them humility that's why i chose those because they are values that make us who we are the human race our benevolent species is all about humanity and the human heart our humane nature has to do with our benevolence which is our heart and the love that comes from our heart and makes us who we are the electromagnetic field of creation life spherical beings so you see that's the power of fantasies and illusions ignite the spark of your imagination it's so always a positive side to fantasies and illusions and a negative side because polarization, polarity is part of uh, existence, electromagnetism. You see, it's part of it. It's part of creation. It's part of it. it and that's what the fire is. This energy yeah, it comes from it. So then ignites it. Eh? Ignites it. So then again, that's the positive side. That's the positive side of fantasies and illusions. But then again, there is the other side, the negative side, the negative side, which is the shadow, which is the unconscious mind, which is all these mediums and media out there, casting, rendering, projecting fantasies and illusions that are negative, lower vibrations. Because the reason why these fantasies and illusions, the one that I spoke about earlier today, these creations are good and positive and ignite the spark of your imagination is because they were created with love. The creator, the compass, the sandal, the human, the artist, the creator that created that creation, that created that role, that character, did it with love because the love of the art, the love of the craft, they were creative, imaginative, they were beautiful artists creating beautiful creations. You see, it was love, energy of creation at the highest of its forms, manifesting these fantasies, these illusions that actually ignite the spark of your imagination because the imagination of the creator created that illusion, that fantasy, the actual fictional character. But then because of the love on that imagination in the first place that came from the brain, from creation itself, truth of energy, mind energy, heart energy, body energy. So the creator created that beautiful character, that fictional character then because of the nature of it, the love of it, the imagination is imprinted in the creation itself. So we resonate with it and that's why it ignites, us, ignites the spark of our imagination when we relate to those characters and those archetypes. So you see that's the positivity of fantasies and illusions. Sometimes fantasies and illusions allow us to do that when they're created with love. Fictional things, creations, but they're fictional because they're not real humans. 
So this is the positive side of fantasies and illusions. But then let's start away with the other side, the negative side. We gotta address it. I have spoken at length about these, and I promised to you that I was gonna talk about them again. Because what are these? The negative side of the fantasies and illusions is these illusions rendering fantasies and they all mediums and media if they're outside your control part of the world then it's these mediums and media projecting casting rendering them if it's your control it's the memories that you live the experiences that come back as a result of the events and the traumas and the things in your life if it's in your control is the shadow the unconscious mind if it's outside your control it's all these mediums and media that are not the shadow and all these mind mechanisms and the uh, the memories that are trying to uh, activate the defense mechanism of your shadow and your unconscious through these themes of low vibration and destruction, static noise, uh, background noise, uh, friction, all these different low vibrations, inert vibrations that are lower frequencies of the heart. Because these creations, these fantasies, these illusions are always below the heart. Meaning uh, the love of the heart, which is the highest frequency. The creators are destructive in nature. These low vibrations, this fear, this pain, this suffering, all this stuff that makes no sense. That is not conductive to evolution. That is not conductive to creation. That is not conductive to growth. That is not conductive to infinity and to who we are, infinite, eternal creators, compass, sandals, love, light, spherical beings, benevolent. It's all this lower vib vibration, and that's why we disintegrate them, we shatter them with our love, because it's higher frequency, higher frequency uh, deals with all these lower frequency, because it's a higher frequency, so it shatters, so it ceases to exist, it gets disintegrated. So this is what energy, when you have a low frequency bandwidth, this is physics, and that uh, frequency encounters a higher frequency, the lower frequency ceases to exist. It gets depolarized, it gets discharged, it gets deloaded, it ceases to exist, or becomes one with it, meaning it is because of the frequency and the love uh, of this higher frequency, then that becomes loving as well because it, it, it essentially becomes one with love because it just the energy coming from the higher frequency elevates the frequency of the lower one and it makes it loving itself and it becomes alive. So, or becomes one with it. It ceases to exist by integrating with the other one. The disintegration uh, happens and then the feedback is just whatever is left is just high frequencies creation. That's what life is all about, beaming. And then you can see death and all this low frequency, this dead stuff, just they, and ceases to exist. It gets disintegrated, decompose, decomp the composition and all this stuff that happens as a result and then life itself uses that as a fuel and that's at the biological scale but at the energy level is exactly that it gets disintegrated and absorbed into the higher frequency so that's what it is and love is that love has the ability to do exactly that because love is the highest energy of creation at the biological scale because it comes from the human heart and the human heart gives us life in the first place so when we encounter all these low frequencies all these low vibrations emitted generated casted uh, projected rendered by mediums and media outside our control whichever medium and media doesn't really matter news whatever technology it doesn't really matter whatever a human it doesn't really matter whatever it is uh is this low vibration this illusion rendering a fantasy then your love for yourself your electromagnetic field would resonate with it and then it would just it won't have an impact on you it would just ceases to exist in your existence your perception it has no add up so it just moves away into a lower frequency and stays over there where it belongs because if it comes in contact with you you're gonna transmute it you're gonna it's gonna get disintegrated your mind is not really gonna care about it because it's too low of a vibration so your consciousness your self-awareness who you are it, do, it doesn't really add any value to it so you just see it observe it and then you absorb it and then you just take the positive out of it which is the message that it always has which is it's a very negative thing it's just like okay you don't do that that's an example of what you don't do and if it's a learning and there's a silver lining out of it you learn it as well because it's an experience it's a meant i have spoken about this before there's always the and if it's something in your control, then it's the shadow, the, the, the dreams and the unconscious and the uh, visions and the uh, memories. 
then your love heals, recovers, shares it, and it gets integrated. It gets disintegrated, the shadow, the negativity, but what survives of it, the essence, this, like the memory itself that never goes away, is not negative anymore. And that shadow is just there to remind us of, of who we are, our identity, and our true self. So this is how it works, because we're electrical, we are electromagnetic, we have polarization, we are who this is who we are, we're infinite eternal creators, we're life spherical beings. So that's the negative side of the shadow and the unconscious things in our control and outside our control, all the things outside our control, mediums and media that are casting and projecting and rendering fantasies and illusions, low vibrations that come in, in, in interact with our force field, then they are designed in a lot of ways to ignite our shadow and our conscious. So our shadow has a defense mechanism triggering all these bad memories and these traumas. So you're paralyzed by fear and all these different things. That's why when it, that happens, then you recognize it immediately. You love it, you neutralize it, disintegrate it and move on. So this is, and you do that with the love of your heart because it's the highest frequency. So this is how it works. This is the mechanism and it applies to all humans at all scales. And if it's a memory from a previous event or a trauma, then the same. You love it and you move on and decharge it, deload it, disintegrate it. And then that energy gets freed up so you can create, be more creative with your mind, with your love, with your imagination. And that's how you will use that, in, that fantasy, that illusion, ignite the spark of your imagination. You see, that's how you do it. It ignites the spark of all your imagination, your brains, your idea, your true self, your vision. Because of all the lessons that you learn, the, if it's a very positive fantasy and illusion, because it's a, a beautiful creation with love by an actual creator, compass asunder, like these characters that I'm mentioning, that are lessons there, that teaches, that are part of my pantheon, we all have that. We can choose to have our pantheons of fantasies and illusions and our pantheon of heritage and legacy of actual real human beings. And then, of course, uh, that's what it does. So the positive side of fantasies and illusions does that ignite the spark of your imagination. But then the negative side, all these mediums and media that are not necessarily conductive of good stuff, all these low vibration stuff, these bad things, static noise, the, uh, the frictions, the shadow, the conscious mind, all this stuff that's bad, we know all these low vibrations, all this stuff. Uh, once we disintegrate it, once we shatter it, once we deal with it, it gets deloaded and discharged, then whatever remains that gets fed back into positivity, the experience, the memory, then that can also, because it transcends, you see, transmutes into positivity because you change the state of it, low frequency into high frequency, because this is physics, this is energy, this is how energy operates. It's electromagnetism. So uh, then whatever is good that you magnetize and attract to you the, 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 the essence of what that, that is, the experience itself that taught us the lesson, the humility of it, the mental, the experience that you use as a foundation to keep on developing, then that is positive now so you can ignite that as a spark of your imagination. And then when all these events from the past or the, uh, that are dealt with, then you got the present moment and then you are loving your heart based because this is our instinct, this is who we are. So new fantasies, new solutions out of your control in way of events, trying to per, you know do something. Then right away, you transmute them into positivity immediately and then learn from it and it just boosts your imagination, boosts your play. And this is what these flames fuel your dreams. Hey, because fantasies and illusions ignite the spark of your imagination, your brain, your mind, your dream, your true self energy, your destination where you're headed as a creator of your own choice, your free will, you manifest your purpose by taking purposeful daily action here and now. Because of these, because of our capability to do this, fueling is the igniting the spark of our imagination because of fantasies and illusions. This is the power of fantasies and illusions. This is why it's in the title of the book, Fantasies and Illusions, uh, Compass, The Quest for Free Will. Because they have a value. There's a reason why there's fantasies and illusions in the first place. Because they really ignite the spark of our imagination. Once we're capable of understanding who we are as compass. And understanding our nature of love. Our high frequency and our vibration. Our benevolence. Life spherical beings. Who we are. Understand our free will. Because the quest of free will is that. It's the quest of life. It's the quest of creation. Because free will is all about creation. Choices. Manifesting reality. Manifesting free will. Manifesting true self. 
manifesting our dreams, manifesting our purpose. And it's all that because of like a compass, infinite energy or habit, life spherical beings, sundials. Because of it, then we can use that energy of the fantasy and delusion that's been transmuted and ignite our imagination and use it as a fuel. Because these flames, this fire, hey, this fantasy, this illusion, these flames fuel your dreams. Just like I showed you uh, in the example of using the pantheon of fantasies and illusions. I show you how I contemplate and self-reflect. And then what happens as a result of that? My dreams say because become stronger, my true self becomes stronger. And then I, you know, I say, for example, Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is on, on my list, eh? on my Pantheon. He's one of my statues, eh? my monument, eh? my museum. I, you know, sometimes contemplate and ask him, me meditate over it. And I go to Obi-Wan and I ask him, Obi-Wan, help me. What would you do in a situation like this? And then your imagination kind of channels Obi-Wan based on all the memories, all the fantasies, all the illusions. You see that what that character is, how he's portrayed on display, and then you, uh, by the actions, by the behavior, then you immediately kind of get a feedback loop back to you, igniting the spark of your imagination, and these flames fuel your dreams. And then I say, oh, okay, so that's what I'm getting from this vision, from this image, from this fantasy, from this illusion. Because remember, the illusion is the fact that Obi-Wan is not real, we know this. But the fantasy is what you live in your mind, the positive fantasy of him telling you what to do based on his actions and your memories and the imagination. You see, it's a powerful mechanism. So then when you do this, because of this archetype that he represents, then you get an immediate feedback and this is the fuel. This is the flame that fuels your dreams because then, okay, so this is what Obi-Wan would do in this circumstance. Okay, great. Because he would do this then again, it fuels your dreams. And then because you are alive and you're actually a dream maker and you're not a fantasy, you're not an illusion, you're a biological, you're a life spherical being, you're a compass, you have a quest, you have a dream, you have a purpose, you have free will, then you take purposeful daily action. And when you take purposeful daily action, that's exactly what happens. Your dreams come true because you're fueled by this energy that was given to you by the imagination that came out of this positive fantasy, this positive illusion. And which is the opposite of the bad ones, the shadow, the unconscious, and all the baddies of the mediums and media out there doing the little funky business. So uh, that funky nonsense comes to an end. And when you transmute that into positivity, then even the nonsense out there also is used to fuel your imagination, to ignite the spark and all that. To f These flames are fueled by your dreams because still part of life is still there. Fantasies and illusions are real in the sense that they actually have an impact. So it's up to you which, what the impact is. And that's what a quest for free will is as compass to shatter them, disintegrate them. So we actually get the value out of it and love because we are here to love and create. This is what we are here to do. I hope this makes sense. So then again, you see, fuels the dream. And then this is what Obi-Wan would do. I'm going to listen to a general Kenobi and uh, my dreams are... Back in my dream sound. I got General Kenobi right there behind my back. You know, covering my six. So that's an example. And then this leads to this fire lights your destination, you see? Because then this dream, this vision, this ignites the spark of your imagination. This, this fire lights your destination because it's a light, it's a torch. It's lighting it. Your destination is ahead of you. The purpose, the dream that is coming true, that is being fulfilled, that is being manifested, that, that we are achieving, that we are accomplishing, that we are attaining uh, through our purposeful daily action, through our free will, through our, our identity and true self, as compass, who we are, why, how, everything coming together in flow, in action. So big time and energy, everything is coming together, sundials, you know, opening the portal, building the bridge, Supercharging our brain, supercharging our mind, supercharging our hearts, being more, being braver, more courageous, taking more action, loving more, creating more, imagining more, stronger visions of ourselves. All these coming together as one, as infinite eternal creators that we are, benevolent species. And then this fire, this, can you see? The fire, this light, this, this fire lights your destination. You see, this imagination, the dream, the power of a heart. The power of our creation that comes from the heart. 
the electromagnetic field of creation energy itself is manifested in the flesh through the human heartbeat so we conscious and self-aware so this fire lights your destination the dream and then we go there and we can see the path and we just go have a clear true north you see it's beautiful and then endless energy within because we are endless a we infinite know thyself spoke about this the peace within our nature our infinite nature why is infinite in nature and we can reason about why with our brains our consciousness and self-awareness and what gives us consciousness and self-awareness the human habit which is energy in the first place and with spherical light beings just like the sun is and the earth and their electromagnetic fields and creation itself you see it's all connected it's endless energy within it's being one with everything understanding this is the key to know who we are identity and true self we're infinite creators because of it we're infinite eternal creators because we're infinite energy and we're infinite energy because we're infinite love because we are life and we are conscious and self-aware is this is the fire the fire so fantasies and illusions ignite the spark of your imagination these flames fuel your dreams this fire lights your destination endless energy within fantasies and illusions ignite the spark of your imagination these flames fuel your dreams this fire lights your destination endless energy within Humanity, I love you all with all my heart, with all my might. We are a benevolent species. We are the human race. This is who we are. We are a heartful species, a heart-based species, a love-based species. We are like spherical beings. This is our nature. This is who we are. But infinite love, infinite creation, infinite everything. Because this is who we are. We are the citizens of the Republic of Planet Earth. We are the citizenry of the Republic of Planet Earth. We are the defenders of the Republic of Planet Earth. We are the leaders of the Republic of Planet Earth. I love you all with all my heart, with all my mind.